Look, see the way he sets it back, though. Look at this, and this wonderful walkway. That's that, of course, is the, the drama school. My son had a the architect had a wonderful iron construction out in front of it. He did for Brustein. When Brustein left, and a, a new director of the school came, they tore it down. Isn't that awful? <laughs> anyway, though, look, see how these really work. They're, it's a beautiful little courtyard here. See, that's what Roger was able to do. He breaks down the scale, breaks it down. I mean, originally they had up here and around over there on Elm Street, they had high, flat fronted sort of Renaissance buildings like Columbia. And it was the wrong scale for New Haven. It was the wrong scale for this kind of city. This is so much more actually so much better in scale. Look at this. This is what, you know, this is what Jung would call the death and resurrection archetype. Low, dark place, then a larger, brighter place, then finally out on the other side, the big, the big, uh, garden. Pretty really great. And this is a wonderful way he breaks the scale down. Nobody else is as good as this as Rogers. And you know, when I was an undergraduate here just across the way at Jonathan Edwards, we were we were we believe, we despised this architecture. I absolutely despised it. There was a very brilliant pair of articles written in a, something called the Harkness Hoot. This is Harkness Squadron. It's called the Harkness Hoot attacking this architecture and all the Bauhaus principles of the 20s because of steel, and they call it girder Gothic because of steel in it, and so on. And it's very funny, very funny architect. And I think it affected Whit Griswold, who was an undergraduate at that time. So when he came president after the war, he wanted modern architecture, he didn't want any more of this stuff. Now, thank God we, they didn't do it. I think Evan Gropius or Frank Lloyd Wright or somebody didn't do this back in the, in the teens and 20s. And this missman really knew what he was doing. He knew what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to create a wonderful, ideal little dream world here. And the point of the colleges, of course, was to break down the student body into small enough communities so people could feel part of the community. And that's what they did. This whole quadrangle is 1917. That's when they start. And I think it was paid for largely by the secret societies, in fact. Uh, and uh, then it was subdivided in the 30s when the college system was initiated. And the other side of there is Saybrook, and this is Brantford. 